<laughs> All right, let's go. Embodied living examples of each of the three phases of the multidimensional harmonization method. Phase one, align the body-mind connection. So basic little understanding I want to give you before we even go into the way I want to show you a couple of steps to do this is I want you to understand that the chatter in your mind, you know, like all the blah, 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 blah going on in your mind, it is a reaction to the fact that there's something going on deeper. And the mind, all the mind is aware is that there's something down there. I don't know what's going on, but I don't like it because I don't understand it. And so we start trying to make, we, we make up shit. We make up stories. We create BS belief systems. We, you know, we, we build this huge ugh, structure in our mind of, you know, if I do this, then that happens. So I have to be like this and the world's like this and blah, 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 blah. And all of that is a mental construction. And your mind is like staying in there because it can't really go anywhere else. It's staying in there. And it can't really stop doing it because there's still something going on lower than it, lower than its level of understanding, lower than its level of being able to grasp it and like, you know, dissect it and solve it because it can't do it. There's a constant alarm in the mind of like, I got to try to figure that out. I got to try to figure something out, but it will never be able to because what is happening in your physical and energetic bodies and what is going on in your emotional body is not mental. It is not mental. Your mind cannot understand it. What can happen with the mind is that once we, the consciousness, go there and understand it, or understand it, or however you want to use that word, from an embodied place, from actually going into that form of intelligence then the mind will be able to grasp. Then the mind will be able to like, oh, okay. Just kind of like you'd meet an alien and you get to know him and then you're kind of like, okay, I, I, okay. Like, so it's the same idea. Your mind is aware there is a problem down there because I don't know what it is, so it's a problem and I got I to gotta solve it. So blah, 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 blah. Or there's pain down there. I don't want to, I don't know how to feel it without feeling like I'm going to self-destruct. So stay up here and blah, 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 blah. So when we want to align the body-mind connection, step one, be aware of the blah, blah, blah. You know, <laughs> it's like, like basic, basic mindfulness practice. It's like, okay, you know, instead of letting your mind just like blah, 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 the time you start bringing in a consciousness into the process. But for me, mindfulness isn't enough. I want to, I want to go from mindful to soulful. That's my goal. Like, but Still, the mindfulness practices have a place. So when you want to work on aligning the body-mind connection, you start by being aware, become aware of the mindless chatter, become aware of what's going on in your head. Most of the time, we're like freaking fighting with someone or we're like, or we're, we're bitching about something or we're judging something or we're making up stories about something. Like, it's just, <laughs> your mind is crazy. It's, it's, it's insane. It's literally 1% of your mind. It's like, blah, blah, blah. And we're so in it that we think it's all of it. And it's not true. 99% of your mind is silence and knows the joy of silence. But that 1%, that's the chatter. So first step of working on aligning the body-mind connection is becoming aware of the chatter. And the way I like to talk about this is like, hear it. Don't listen to it. Listen is like... Listen with, with, with your whole being. Listen is like, you're like, oh my God, yeah, it's true. Oh my God. Like, no, none of that. None of that. Hear what's going on in your head. Like, oh, I'm thinking about that guy or I'm thinking about what she did to me or, or you know, I'm thinking about I'm, I won't be able to make it or I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not safe or whatever the blah, blah, blah is going on. Become aware of it. Hear it. Like you're hearing something like birds over there. Okay. That done, then you drop into your body. Where is that in my body? Because just remember, we got to remember this thing. Your mind is blah, blah, blahing about something. It's reacting to something going on at a deeper level. So instead of staying in the blah, 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 we drop down into the body. Your body can't lie. It's the... It's, 
you know, David Hawkins figured this out. The whole muscle testing kinesiology uh, discipline emerged from that. Your body cannot lie. Your body cannot lie about that feels good. That feels bad. Like it can't. So the body is always willing to show you where that energy is that the mind is to. So down into the body. We drop into the body. And we're not going into our body with our mind. This is a super important distinction. You know, your mind's like, okay, let's go down there and let's go figure it out. And let's go, you know, let, let's go solve this problem. Okay. So first of all, it's not a problem. Only the mind makes shit up as a problem. There's an energy there that needs you to come meet it. If we go really deep into it, it's like a part of your consciousness that's been holding on to a trauma. It's holding on to pain and protecting you from having to feel it all the time by lodging it in the body somewhere and holding it in service to you until you're willing to come back and reclaim that and say, thank you so much for holding this for me. So the way you're going into your body is not as this kind of like, you know, warlike mind that's like, I'm going to go stare at that thing and, and make it go away. Or I'm going to fix it or I'm going to heal it or I'm going to this or I'm going to that. These energies just need you to come where they are. So I can go a little bit deeper into the energies. Some of the energies aren't you, but a lot of them are. And before you can ever get to the place where you can tell what's not you, you need to know what is you. And you need to fill the spaces of you completely so that other things that aren't you aren't able to hang out there that easily. So this is step one. We've got to come back into the body. We got to come back into the unit. This thing up here, it's reactive. It's reacting to something. So we stop reacting to the reacting to the reacting to the reacting with the judgment over another judgment over another judgment. That whole like <laughs> structure that really could topple down so easily. Like we don't want to. We don't want to live in that structure. It's it's like a deck of cards, a house of cards. You can just we drop into the body. So it's like you're doing this with your consciousness, not with your mind. You'll know that you're doing it with your consciousness because you'll still be able to hear the chatter, but you won't be there anymore. You won't be like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, my God, oh, my God, you're right. Down into the body, down into the body. Where is it in the body? And It could be anywhere. It could be in your toe. It could be on the tip of your nose. It could be, you know, usual spots throat, plexus, you know, sacral, womb area. It could be in the legs. It could be anywhere. It is an energy that is being held until you, the conscious, the consciousness, come back fully into it so that it can open up and reveal itself to you. In order for it to open up and reveal itself to you, it needs to feel safe with you. This is key, key information. If you go in there with your mind that wants to fix it and get rid of it, it ain't going to feel safe. Your body's not a moron. <laughs> your body feels intentions. Your body feels the truth of an intention. We just spend most of our time like not listening to our body by staying in our minds. Oh, well, maybe he's a good person, even though my body and my gut reaction is telling me like, you know, This is a very powerful practice to learn to do. My mind's freaking out about something. Okay, thanks for the information. I heard it. Where is this in my body? And then with your consciousness, you go in there completely. Completely. It's like it's like you dive into it. But like, kind of like think about it more like, like a slow seeping into it, like, like quicksand or something. So it's not like diving in. Like, no, that's too aggressive. You know, there's traumas in there. There's low frequency energies in there. There's energies that need to know that they're safe opening up to you. You can look at it like childlike energies because they, they kind of are. They're unevolved pieces of your consciousness. But you go in there softly, gently. You know, like as a consciousness. I like to tell my students, like, just go in there with curiosity. Go in there like you're walking in a jungle and you're exploring all these kinds of butterflies you've never seen before. Right. So we're not going in there like, oh, it's going to hurt or oh, what the fuck's down there? Like, we're just like, oh, interesting. 
and you just kind of quicksand into it, into it, into it, into it. A lot of the energies in you, just you doing that has a huge impact. They open up. Maybe something was more diffuse and all of a sudden it starts like getting more and more like particularized. Like you, you started being able to tell like, at first I felt it all my jaw and then by staying there and just breathing with it and just being there with no agenda, no strategy, no desire for it to change, just letting it know, hey, I'm here. I'm here. Thank you so much for holding this. And I'm here with you at your pace, however you want to reveal yourself to me at your pace. Often it'll start shrinking until you you really get that. It's like, it's like a one place thing. And then we go into it. And then a whole bunch of funky stuff can happen. Maybe we go into it and, you know, you're more a person that does the mindfulness work and we just go into it and, and bring so much consciousness into it that it, it starts just dissolving. Like often it can just be like that. But for most of us that are kind of like lyrical and visual and, you know, like super expanded imagination capacities, we can start dialoguing with these energies. You know, it might look like an object. It might be a color. You know, you can ask questions like if, if that sensation in my body was an animal, what would it be doing right now? And, you know, like your subconscious mind loves working with you like this because it's like, oh, you're actually asking me a question and you're not being super hostile with me. And, you know, like our subconscious mind is happy to open up when we come at it from a place of neutrality, benevolence, curiosity with a pure intent. So you hear it there. We switch the focus. We unlatch. You know, our consciousness is all like stuck in our minds most of the time. You unlatch from it and you come back into the body. It's so much faster and there's so much more space. And the content is very, very different. The content is very different in your body than it is in your mind. So a couple of little keys, little things to, to tap into to understand. When you do this, the mind will try to really get involved with it. You know, it's like, you're like, okay, the, I'm thinking about uh, the, this guy that I'm angry at. And no, no, no. Okay. Where is that in my body? And then you go feel it in your body and it's like, oh, it's on my plexus. And then you go in your plexus and it's like, it's like a fist. Ah, you know, <laughs> it's like, you're not being neutral and benevolent in that moment. Like I'm not saying it doesn't look like a fist, but I'm just saying, did you see the energy I went into it with? <laughs> I didn't go into there as an explorer discovering all these new species of butterflies in a jungle. You know, <laughs> I went in there with the, <laughs> sometimes you'll arrive there and it's like, okay, it's, it looks like a very hostile environment. There's a, there's an animal, it's scared. There's a bunch of energies around it. No, no, no. All right, let's go. Let's bring more and more of your benevolence and your neutral energy into that space. This is the beauty of doing this kind of work with the Align the Body-Mind connection is that you can actually converse and get to know your defense structures as they are, as they see the world. You know, if you end up seeing a little fox that's really scared and there's a bunch of wolves all around it, uh, yeah, that's, so that's what your defense structure is seeing in the world. And then you play, you play. The whole goal of you coming in here is to play with what's here and let it know, hey, I'm back. I'm back. You are the conscious creator of your life. All these defense structures, you built them at a certain point. And you can now decide that it's time to upgrade. It's time to update them. It's time to dissolve all the frequencies and the beliefs around them that keep them in place. Just but... This is done slowly. It's not like, I'm just going to rip all my defense structures out and then I'm going to go in the world. And it's like, no, no. We help the defense structures heal by going into the energy that they're protecting. So this process, we just, you, you constantly want to go deeper and deeper and deeper. So for example, with my little example of the, the fox and the big wolves all around it, you could be like, I need to kill all the wolves and I need to this, and I need to that. Whoa. Let's go into the fox. What's in the fox? If you go into the body of the fox, where's the pain? You know, oh, it's in its heart. Okay, let's go in there. 
deeper, deeper, deeper. And you allow the body to do its job. Your body is there to help you feel. Your body is your feeling center. This is so awesome. We get to have a body and have the emotions coursing through our you know, biochemical systems and stuff like that. So we, ugh, we go in there and we hold space for it. We hold it. We hold the energy. Sometimes it'll look more like a, an inner child that's like, don't talk to me. Get away from me. You know, fine. Go sit beside it and say, I'm just going to sit here. And maybe it's like, get away from me. Baby. It's okay. I'm just going to sit here and send you love. And you can do whatever you need to do right now. I'm not leaving, but I'm not going to force you to do anything either. That energy is so powerful. It's not anything that's truly you. If you come into the space of your body and the energies that are there, if you come in there with that neutral benevolent intention of I'm here to hold space and allow you to shift at whatever pace you need to. My definition of love is as you wish and at your pace. Try to always have that that way of functioning with yourself. No more trying to plow through there and get the gunk out of the gutter and I'm going to go down there and clean it. Rawr, like, no, no. These energies in you need to feel safe opening up and revealing what they're holding, which most of the time is deep pain. And it's beautiful when you do it. When you really stay there and you do it, they start feeling safe with you. And the more they start feeling safe with you, the more the body relaxes, the more the mind calms down and understands, okay, oh, we're not going to die from doing this. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Maybe I'll get on board. It's not sure yet, but, <laughs> and that's when phase two comes in. Phase two of expanding the heart space. So let's just do it a couple of minutes. Think about something that's bothering you. Just be aware of the chatter and then drop into your body. You completely switch your focus into your body. Just do it with me right now. Drop into your body. It's normal that the feelings amplify. That's good. That lets us know that they're receptive. And you go into wherever the feeling is in your body and you go hang out there. No agenda. You're not going there because you want something from it. You're going in there because you don't want it to be there alone anymore. You're going there to meet it where it is and allow it to present itself to you however it needs to, however it feels safe. And you are non-reactive here. You are the consciousness. You are the context, you are the space, you are what that is in, and you just let it know you're safe. And you just stay there, you breathe, the mind might start kicking in, you're like, thank you, mind, I know, I know this is scary for you, I love you, and you stay in the feeling in your body, you allow it to expand, you sink into it deeper and deeper and deeper. There's no such thing as too deep. How low you can go is how high you can soar. So just deeper. And you just breathe with it. You stay with it. Don't try to resolve it. Don't try to fix it. Just stay with it. Just this. Is a very powerful practice. And now we're going to amp it up by bringing in the heart frequency to come and meet that energy. I'm stopping this video and we'll start the next one. I want you to understand you could just stay here for a while. You could just stay in the space of getting to know these energies in you, where you're holding energies. This can get very, very um, 
revealing. You can start feeling structures in you and ways that things are connected together between your hip and your belly button and your this and your that. And you just go in there. The power of your consciousness, the power of you as a conscious being that go into something, not as it, not of it, you go into it as the consciousness in which that's going on is one of the most powerful actions you can ever do in your energy bodies. In the next video, I'll teach you how to tap into the heart space from this deep place of having reconnected your body and your mind, aligning the body-mind connection.